Lemon with Kathy by Design. Welcome to Throwback Thursday. This is a weekly series that I do on my YouTube channel where we usually dig back into an older paper collection, tool, dye, product, technique, and we make something fresh and new. But on Tuesday, we started this really sweet altered book box using Chow Bella's Into the Wild collection. And I wanted to go ahead and finish this project up today. This is the paper collection we're using. We've used the Creative Pad. We've used the 12 by 12 patterns and the 12 by 12 paper pad to make this collection. And I will link to the first um, tutorial in the description box below as well as a link to my blog where you'll find a linked supply list so you can locate all of these items easily. So this is a book box. I think I picked this up at a yard sale but it measures about five and a half by seven and a half and it has a one and three quarter inch spine and you can go back and look at the tutorial on Tuesday where I shared with you how to apply layers of paint and gesso. And we built the cover together to create the box. And now today, what we're going to do, because I know you guys like to see the finished product first, we're going to make the mini album that goes inside. And this is the cutest. I love this paper collection. Um, it is just, it's just gorgeous. So this is four and a quarter by, no, I think it's four and a half by six and a half. Let me tell you the truth here. Yes, it's four and a half by six and a half. And it's got chipboard covers. We'll make it from scratch. Uh, it's covered with brown card stock. And I've used this really cool new tool from We Are Memory Keepers. You can get this at the Button Farm Club. It's to help you make the book and make it properly. It's a neat tool. Um, even though I've made lots and lots of mini albums from scratch, I did find that helpful. So on the cover, I've stitched layers of my patterned paper with cardstock mats. And then I fussy cut a whole bunch of images and stacked and layered them. We couldn't do a ton of dimension because this has to fit in the box. I did add a vintage button this beautiful metal leaf and acorn and pine cone charm and this little metal corner. Here's burlap on the spine and here's the back cover. The inside is simple, but simple doesn't mean boring. And in keeping with my Throwback Thursday theme, I reached back into my stash for a bunch of little ephemera bits and such that I've had for a long time and put to good use. Uh, these little envelopes are one of those examples. These are little cardstock envelopes. I think I got these from Hot Off the Press probably about 15 years ago. But what I did was I used these to create a double pocket. The inside has a little folio with room for photos or journaling. It has a little magnetic closure. And then we added gussets to the back so that it's actually a double pocket. There's the inside pocket and there's the pocket that a four by six image can slip into. Then over here, we paper pieced to make another pocket. This is just a simple U pocket. And I've got a little scrap photo mat. And this is like a little Rolodex or something. I don't know exactly what this is. I found it in my stash and I thought, oh, well, this is cute, I'll use it. Just covered it up with paper, added a button to the tab. Here's a little tag and that goes in that pocket. Then we turn the page and here's another double pocket page. This has a tag and a little sort of three by four image in there. So room for journaling, you can put photos on the back. Really pretty, this paper collection is so beautiful. And then here's a little flip up page, simply made just by scoring along the top. Here is a little double pull out page, really fun. Just, you know, flaps back behind the base pages. Simple stuff, but this paper collection is so beautiful. I didn't want to do too much. I wanted to keep it really simple. So you can do small photos here and large photos here. And then these little Tim Holtz teeny tiny uh, hinge clips are always fun. Here's a double tip-in page. 
And again, I've done, these are little itty bitty file folders that I found. I wrapped them with a band of designer paper to create a pocket. And then I put more of these tab things in there. So extra room for photos and journaling. That's really fun. And then I had to do it, guys. I made a pop-up page. I couldn't help it. This, these little squirrels, look at him. <laughs> He's so cute. And I just love pop-ups. So this is my pop-up page. This was the best page to do it on because the pages are close together. So some fussy cutting and some torn paper just to finish that out. Really cute. Then this is the back page. This has a decorated coin envelope. And I don't think I actually even put anything in here. It's a good place to stash small things and another little tab and file folder. Here's our other little pocket with a little card insert and our four by six with room for journaling and room for a photo. So if you're ready to get started making this, just uh, stick around and the tutorial is coming up next. from medium weight chipboard two four and a half by six and a half inch pieces and one one and a quarter by six and a half inch and then I use this nifty new tool that I got at Button Farm Club this is a bookmaking tool I really like it this part here goes down in between your chipboard so you get the perfect space in between your spine but you it also helps you keep everything straight at the same time which if you've made a mini album from scratch you know how challenging that is and then this part here fits on the corner whoops let me get this right and then you cut your corners so I'm just going to mark off these corners with this tool. You can see I've already adhered my chipboard to my 12 by, I think I went 12 by 8 piece of paper. All right. So I'm going to come in with my scissors. Cut off my corners. I can't believe this. My neighbor just started mowing his lawn earlier today. I was trying to do this and my yard guy came to do the lawn. So I'm just gonna to try to power through this noise. My Lord is like a cool spring wind And I am tired Bleeding My Lord is like Blue pine, when I am hot and feeding. My Lord's my strength, the reason I try. Though times are hard, coming. My Lord's my pillow, which I lay my head, and I will answer. And this fits in there just right. That's perfect. I've cut a ten and a quarter by six and a quarter inch piece of my patterned paper, and I'm going to put my adhesive on the spine. To start with. Sent up 
my paper. That fine show Jesus has to tell her, oh Lord, I want to be on that boat. I'm just creasing this down into the spine. And then I'm going to take this page. Eternal. Oh Lord, I want to be on that boat. Bathe in love. Eternal. Again, I'm going to crease down in there. And then push this to the outside. I use Dry's Clear Adhesive, so if I get that overage, I just wipe it up with my paper towel. It dries, as it says, clear. So that's a nice thing. But this way I know that my papers are securely in place. Okay, now I'm gonna bend this. I'm gonna push the other way. And there's our cover built. I'm gonna let this dry and set up and then we'll move on to the next thing. All right, friends, we're at the point where we're going to make the inside pages for our mini album. And you're going to need three sheets of 11, by six and a quarter inch craft card stock. And the first one you're going to put on your scoring tool and you're going to score it at two, at six and a quarter, and at six and three quarters. And that gives you a little half inch spine. This is gonna be the most inner page of our mini album. This is a stacked spine. It's one of my favorite, easiest ways to make a mini album. The second page you're going to score at one and three quarters, you're going to score at six, and you're going to score at six and three quarters. And this little flap folds to the front, and this is the piece that this page is going to tuck into. And then the last piece, you're going to score at four and a quarter, you're going to score at five and a quarter, and you're going to score at nine and a half. And then this gives us our one inch spine, and this flap page goes to the back. And this is the front of our front page. Well, the front and the back, actually. So, now I'm gonna bring these in. Sometimes I've used score tape on these. Today, I think I actually wanna use, go ahead and use my liquid adhesive because if I'm not perfectly straight, this gives me a little bit of wiggle room to straighten things out and center them. It's also nice and strong. What I'm doing basically is lining this up right in the center of this page so that we're even and straight. So you can see we've got about an even amount of space here as what we have here. So this is the three quarter inch. Now we're gonna bring in the half inch. We're just gonna do the same thing. Oops. 
Well, I think maybe the score tape is a better idea because while you can't jiggle it, it doesn't shift on you once you've placed it either. So I'm just pressing this down with my damp paper towel. I'm gonna come over here and clean up where this glue leaked out. All right. Shift this up toward the top just a jig. All right. I press everything firmly into place. So here's our pages. All right. This is four and a quarter by six and a quarter, and it's just a flat page. You turn this page and you have two more just flat pages. You turn this page, you have two more flat pages. You turn this page and you have an inside pocket here, two more flat pages. You have an inside pocket here or a flap, and you have an inside pocket or a flap here. And you can see it's all lined up. It looks really good. And I'm not going to put this in our book yet because... It's easier to work with it outside the book than inside the book. When we get it all finished, then we'll go ahead and we'll put it in here. But that's how you assemble your pages. And if you wanted to, you could even wait. You could put these together and then glue them in. But I do think it's a little bit easier to go ahead and put them together um, ahead of time. So, and I might change, like I might make these, I might do like this. This is a double tip in. I might switch these around a little bit as I think about it um, and just see what I like, okay? pages set up and work on the front and back covers of this cute little mini album and I went searching in my stash my one of my goals right now is to use up stuff that I have and I have so much cool stuff a lot of it has been sent to me I've been doing this for so many years I've accumulated a lot so over 10 years ago this company called hot off the press made these little little envelope things and I thought they were cool and so I bought a bunch and I found a couple of them in my stash today and I thought well I'm going to go ahead and use these and we're going to turn these into double pockets. So I just want to show you how to put one of these together. The first thing I did was I added gussets to the back side and gussets are just little folded pieces of paper. You can use your scraps. They make like a hinge and then there's a channel that your paper can go down through. And this gives you the full width of any pocket that you might make. And that's why I love to use gussets. The next thing I did was I traced around the flap and trimmed out paper. And you know, you're just gonna put your paper underneath the flap and trim around it. And then if you cut to the inside of that line that you've trimmed, you're gonna find you have a piece of paper that fits very well. And we all learned how to trace when we were in kindergarten, so I don't think I need to demonstrate how to trace. But here's our front flap. And then before we put our inside flap on, I wanna add my magnets, because I want this to have a little magnetic flap. And you want to put your magnet in the center, just slightly below the midpoint. And that way it's gonna land on the right spot um, to hook up below. You'll see what I mean. Cause you don't wanna to get too close to the edge of your paper. It's really hard to seal your paper properly. So I take the companion magnet, put it on the top. And those of you who've seen me do this a million times, you can skip ahead. Then you fold this down and lift, and that's the perfect placement for this second magnet. And I always like to add just a tiny bit of score tape 
to ensure that it's gonna stay put. So I cut these little pieces of paper, and if you have an envelope maker, you could totally just make envelopes out of your patterned paper. And that's actually probably easier in the long run than what I've done here. But I wanted to use these because they were in my stash. But you could absolutely do the same thing. These are four and a quarter, and they're all uh, finished. Hold on, I'll give you the measurements so that if you want to use your envelope punch board, you can. So we don't need to line this whole piece, right? Because that part's not going to be seen. And I'm just going to take some score tape. Put it on my flaps. This way you don't run the risk with the liquid glue of it ooking out and actually sealing your little pocket shut. So peel these off. And I did the same thing with this shaped front. I just traced around it onto my patterned paper. So when this is all folded up, it is four and a quarter by three and a half. And I know you can find that measurement on your punch board, so you could totally do that. And I'm gonna put my inside flap, and when you're doing your inside flap, just make sure that you're tracing the right direction so that when you, if you're using a directional pattern like I did here so that you don't end up with upside down squirrels. Although, I will say the squirrels in our backyard are pretty happy whether they're right side up or upside down. Then I have this little piece that covers the front, like this. And you can see it's not perfect, but that's why I um, inked my edges. So there's that one all finished. And then to go inside, this is a four by six and a half inch piece cut from my scraps. This will fit right down in here nice as you please. So you can do like a little note card in there. And then to secure this, um, I'm just going to add my adhesive on my gussets. And this is going to go on the back cover just like this so it's kind of a fun treatment and if you want to leave it up and open here you can and you could you know but I just thought it was fun to have the extra pocket you can see this will go back behind here and a lot of times what you'll have to do is once your glue has set come back with your ruler and just open those gussets up. It just, you just wanna wait for your glue to set so you don't undo all your hard work that you just did. But that will make it easier for your paper to slide in and out. My glue hasn't set up yet, but you can see how this works. So it's really fun. These just slide in here and it gives you a fun little feature on the front and back cover of your mini album. through what I've done. This is not decorated or anything, but you can decorate your pages on your own based on the photos that I'll share with you. This is just the pages. So on everything is four by six to go inside. I think it's actually four by six and an eighth. Let me double check myself. I think I did four by six and an eighth. Nope, it's exactly four by six. So this was a scrap that was four inches wide and I matched it up with this little 
I think this is one and three quarters. Yeah. And I just did a simple U pocket. And then I had found in my stash a bunch of these. I don't know what they are. They were just in there. I've had them for forever. So I dressed them up. You could use like any kind of a Rolodex or even a little mini file folder die if you had one. These are two and three quarters by three and three quarters. And then you've got the little tab on the top. So I just covered these with two and a half by three and a half inch pieces of my patterned paper front and back. So you've got a journaling spot here. You could put a little photo here. And here's a tiny photo mat. And these go in this cute little U pocket. Then flip the page. And I've done the same thing here with pockets. I just haven't put anything in them yet. And this is a great way to use up papers that are the right width, but they're a little short. So that works there. Then we flip to this page. And here what I did was I took some of my four by six images and I trimmed them to fit, scored a little flap on the top and made little flip pages. So that's kind of fun. And again, you have room here for journaling and room for photos down here. Then we turn to this page. And what I did here was I created two little pull-out elements. These are using these um, small cut-aparts. What are these? Two and a half by three and three quarters. These are from the A4 pad. And I just scored a little quarter inch flap here and then scored between and there's our base page. So that's kind of fun on each side. And again, you have room for photos, small photos or journaling on the back and larger photos on the page. So I think I'm gonna leave this actually, usually I do lap books, but I think I'm gonna let this be an actual mini album. Here we have a double tip in page and on the flaps, the flaps are different widths. So on the right hand side, you want one and five eighths by six and an eighth. And on the left, you want one and seven eighths by six and one eighth. So cut your strip, the one, seven, one and seven eighths inch, and then just trim this one to be the right width. These are little file folders. I got these, I think when I was on the um, Canvas Court team. So, I put these little tabs, they fit inside. And then I just took a strip of paper. I believe this is one and, it doesn't really matter as long as it's the, not, yeah, this is one and a seven eighths inches wide. And I wrapped it around to make a little pocket because if you put glue or gussets on the inside, these are so tiny. And then I just covered our little, I don't know what you wanna call these, but I thought that was cute on the flaps and then there's the inside. So room for journaling, room for photos. Um, and I'll dress these up with some little fussy cuts and stuff. Then that brings us to this page, which is where I wanted to do a pop-up element. And this is the perfect page for a pop-up because these, this page and this back page are very close together. So I put my base papers down and then I fussy cut this squirrel. And you can see I had to do some trial and error, but finally what I came up with was I trimmed, I scored a half an inch along the bottom of my um, postcard image and then folded this back, all right, and folded in half. And you can see I had a hard time finding half, but I finally got there. And now this is going to, I'm going to take this right up into right where this meets. And I'm coming down as low as I can without coming out the bottom. All right. And I'm going to take my adhesive and don't go crazy here. Just put enough to hold it in place and then close your page, press it down, flip to the back, open this side of your page, place your adhesive here, close this page, and now you've got this really cute squirrel pop-up, which 
I'm not going to lie to you people. I love this little squirrel pop-up. I just wish I had folded him the right way the first time. But, um, you know, life is not perfect. And I've got his little buddy that I'm going to put down here eating his acorns. And then I'll probably put the trees over on this side and make this be like a little scenery page just for the fun of it. And on the back, this I'm going to turn into a pocket. So here we are at the last page. And I cut my paper and then I trimmed one and three eighths inch off of it to fit here. This is the back side of this pattern. And I put gussets at the top and bottom to make a pocket. Then I added one of our little file folders and one of our little file tabs inside the pocket so we have room for photos and journaling. And then I had this coin envelope that I just covered with patterned papers. And I'll probably stick a cute tag or something like that in there. So this goes in the pocket. This goes in this pocket. And now we're ready to add this to our album. First thing you want to do is make sure you right side up because boy, does that ever stink. I've done that. Place your adhesive on your spine. And I'm just going to line it up. Oops. I mean, this is where score tape is great, and it's where score tape is not great because you cannot move things once you put score tape down. But that looks pretty much in the middle to me. Let this open out. I come in with my bone folder and just press it down real good. There's our little pop-up page. I'm going to have to be careful with him. I added this together as our favorite place to be in some trees over here. I love the pop-up page. Of course, you know me, guys. I'm a kid at heart. I love pop-ups. All right. So this much of it is done. I did take... A, I think this is one inch, it might be one and a quarter inch. Yeah, it's a one and a quarter inch piece of burlap that I had left over from making the book, the box, and I put that on the spine. I think that looks really nice. And now we just need to put our book together and we can put it in our box and we're done with this project. So let me figure out the design for the cover. is I've stitched a four by six inch panel of this leaf pattern onto a four and a quarter by six and a quarter piece of craft, that heavy craft card stock. And then I took this little scrap of the green, which is three by five, and I matted it on a three and a quarter by five and a quarter inch piece of our brown paper. And before I glue this down onto the base, this is just a scrap left over from doing a bunch of fussy cutting. I fussy cut the cute um, squirrel cluster that's on the inside cover of, I think it's the, um, I think it's the creative pad. So I just want to put this there to create See how it looks like an extra layer? It's kind of cool. and um, But it doesn't add a lot of thickness because we want to make sure that our cover on our box closes over this album. So now we have to pay attention to things like dimension. All right, and this is going to go down right here, just like this. So I took that clustered squirrel image 
and I broke it up into a whole bunch of little pieces. And we're just going to create a cool sort of a layered effect without a lot of dimension. just clustered these things together. I'm trying to decide if I want to bring in anything else here. Let's see what it looks like on our cover. So lots of layers, but not tons of dimension, which is kind of what I was going for for our cover. All right, let's finish up this little cover. I went into my stash and found this sweet little brown button. And I'm actually gonna leave the thread hanging because I kind of like 
That's the original thread. And these are old buttons too, so that's pretty cool. And then this is a gorgeous fall leaf. I can't remember if I got this from Funky Junky Boutique or if I got this from Butterbee Scraps or where I got it. And then a couple of little charms. One's a gold acorn, one's a golden pine cone, and we're just gonna glue this down. This will take a few minutes to set up. And um, one of the reasons I like Dry's Clear Glue is that it does work with metals, which is very nice. And then a lot of times what I do is I take a, a binder clip. Only this one's not big enough, so I'm better off not doing that. All right. And then up in this little corner, I felt like we needed a little something. So I found this. This is ancient. I don't even know where. I think this is an old, old, old Tim Holtz ideology, but don't quote me on that. I mean, it is really old. And just put that in that corner. And that's all we're going to do on the cover. I don't think it needs a ton. And like I said, it has to fit inside the box. So we, can't, we, have to, we do have to be careful about how much dimension we add. So I'm just gonna glue this down to our cover. Oh, that is so sweet. Our backyard is full of squirrels and when we eat supper on the back porch, they provide the entertainment. So although I know squirrels are rascally and can do a lot of damage, they're also a lot of fun to watch. And I confess, I do have a bit of a soft spot in my heart for squirrels. All right, we're just gonna press this into place. I added a four and three eighths by six and three eighths inch piece of patterned paper to the back. Just real simple. Again, I don't think we have room to do anything on our spine because it has to fit in our box. Um, there's the back. Let's bring in our box. So pretty. And look at that. Fits it like a glove. So there's our ribbon. Still glad for the ribbon closure though. And that finishes off this sweet little fall project. It can double as home decor and you can put favorite fall pictures in there or just use it as a lap book. Ciao Bella, Into the Wild, Kathy Clement, Kathy by Design. Thank you for joining me, guys. Please give this video a like if you haven't subscribed. We'd love to have you along for the journey. And um, go get your craft on. Bye.